All right, before we get started today, I want to share with you that I have a newsletter that I am publishing these days, and you can check it out at Jonathan Mills Patrick dot substack.com it's where i share even more details on the types of content that i post Hi guys, thanks so much for joining me today. Can you tell anything different about my setup? If you look at the walls back here, you might be able to notice that the color has changed. Right now we've got a nice accessible beige on the wall and it was what was called a Linux tan. We've been in this house about eight years. We've decided to do some renovations. So some wonderful people are here finishing up paint on the house. We've already had the carpet done. Now the painters are here finishing up the house. So if you hear some noise in the background, that's who's who is hanging out with me right now. I uh, want to talk to you today about Coinbase. Coinbase just did their IPO, their initial public offering yesterday, and I actually bought into that IPO, and I'm not so sure that I should have. Now, there, I'm going to cover that with you and exactly why, um, but let's talk about the IPO itself. So it was done through what's called a direct listing, not what is called a traditional IPO. So what's the difference between the two? Well, a traditional IPO is when a company issues new shares. And so the shares that are already outstanding with angel investors, venture capital investors and founders, all that group that have invested before the public offering uh, retain those same shares and they get a little bit diluted because new shares get offered. A direct listing is when um, the shares that those folks have, those early investors, pre-public investors are able to put their shares up for sale on the market. That's exactly what a direct listing is. So there's no new shares changing hand. It's basically uh, whoever Coinbase's investors were. I think there was some public some public announcement yesterday on CNBC that some celebrities had invested in it, like Nas and I believe Kevin Durant. They could have chosen to share their share, sell their shares in this direct listing. So when I bought shares, I could have been buying some of Kevin Durant's shares or something like that. So that's that's what a direct listing is. Let's talk a little bit about the numbers for Coinbase uh, pro, uh, leading up to this IPO. Now it's been around for quite a long time. Coinbase was actually the platform that I used uh, to buy my first cryptocurrencies. I guess we probably should have talked about what Coinbase is, but I'm assuming if you're here based on the headline that you know. So it's a platform where you can buy and sell uh, cryptocurrency. It was one of the early platforms. It was the first place I bought cryptocurrency. Uh, and so it, it's a really good service. Their revenue uh, has been building. And, and so they're up to $1.8 billion in revenue right now with a net income that blew up quite substantially in one year to $800 million. One year prior to that, their net income was only $32 million. So they, they had an enormous amount of growth in a year. And you can imagine what's driving that growth, right? So we've all been quarantined at home for over a year now. The government's been pumping liquidity into the markets, putting money into people's savings accounts. And some people have taken that money. You can sort of think of them as what the, the media calls the Robin Hood group. They've been taking those stimulus checks and investing it in the market. And some have bought cryptocurrency. So... Um, that's probably why they're seeing the huge amount in, in net income growth. Uh, and that is where uh, Coinbase makes their money is they charge for those trades. And it's actually a pretty, pretty steep charge, uh, relatively speaking. They've got a ton of users. They've got 56 million, 56 million uh, verified users on the platform. So lots of value behind, you know, 56 million people trading uh, cryptocurrencies and, and things like that. Let's talk about the IPO numbers for a second. Uh, and so the indication or what they thought the opening price was going to be was originally pegged at $250. Now I've bought into plenty of IPOs and I, you, you know if you've done that, that typically it doesn't strike anywhere, not a very popular IPO that is, doesn't strike anywhere near that $250. So um, waited all day yesterday. They opened the bell, the markets at 930 and waited. I can't remember exactly when it was, but I want to say it was probably around noon or one o'clock when the first trade actually happens. So what they do is they 
they, you know, that they know they're going public that day, but they let the anticipation build to drive that indication price up. So it started at 250 and it just kept growing and growing and growing. And I remember around 355, so we're already $105 over the, indi the early indication price. At 355, it started to slow a little bit. Instead of $5 increment changes, we started to see a couple of dollars, right? Two or three dollar changes. And so I messaged a friend of mine that was also going to buy into the IPO. And, you know, we both sort of said, all right, here it comes. First trade is coming. I had put in a limit order. And what a limit order is, is it's where you say, I'll buy this stock for anything under this limit, right? So I had set up pretty high limit that I was willing to buy the stock at based on all those revenue numbers and active users that I just shared with you because I believe in the company and its model. Uh, so I'd set a pretty high limit. I got my first shares at 381, which is exactly what the, it opened at. So I had input my order to buy at a limit prior to the first trade happening. So as soon as the first trade happened, my platform executed my trade. And by the way, I am on Robinhood for those types of trades. Coinbase price from that point forward yesterday spiked quickly and shot all the way up to $429. And uh, that was the high for the day. So it went up about, quick math in my head, 48 bucks and change. Pretty good return, over 10% over what I would have paid for it. I wasn't willing to sell. I had considered buying and dumping if it had doubled. I've seen that with some IPOs where things double. Uh, but I went ahead and held on to my shares at the end of the day, and I still have them and don't plan to sell right now. It, part of that is because the stock price did hit 429 and then bottomed out, came all the way down underneath what I bought it for, and I think closed yesterday at $310. So I am showing a loss on Coinbase right now. Here's the thing. You would think that is why uh, I'm saying I probably shouldn't have bought into the IPO, but that's not not why I'm saying that. So let me tell you why I think I maybe shouldn't have bought into this IPO. It's not a lack of belief in Coinbase as a company. It's not a lack of belief in cryptocurrency. Uh, it's not because I lost a little bit of money yesterday. I mean, if you're long, meaning you believe in a platform and you plan on holding the stock for a long time, you don't buy and dump. I was just going to do that to get a nice return and then probably come back later and buy more shares after I, after I netted some return. So that is not why I think I made a mistake buying into the Coinbase IPO. Here's why I think I may have made a mistake. If you look at back during the gold rush here in the United States, years and years over a century ago, we had a gold rush where lots of people were running out to California because gold was being found regularly in the hills and people were running out there and starting their own gold mining process. And, you know, people made lots of money mining gold. But because so many people failed, people who also made lots of money were the people that sold them the picks and the shovels and the equipment in order to be able to get to that goal, right? So there's this whole picks and shovels business model. And we also see this with copiers, copy machines, right? So they're not as prevalent anymore because we're in a digital age. But back when people sold copiers, the copier itself didn't cost a lot of money, but the ink did, right? And so that was also sort of a pick and shovel model as well. Um, and so reason I think I may have, may, have, may have made a mistake buying into the Coinbase IPO is I could have taken that same money I invested and invested in the underlying asset, the gold per se, in this pick and shovel model. If Coinbase is a pick and shovel model, meaning they're not the underlying asset that it allows you to, to invest in, it's just the company and they facilitate these transactions, the underlying asset is Bitcoin and Ethereum and other cryptocurrencies. Well, if you've been watching what Bitcoin's doing, and again, I, when I opened this with you, I shared, shared my newsletter. Please check that out. My most recent newsletter publication is on Bitcoin, uh, talking about when Bitcoin might become mainstream. And so I, I recommend you check that out. If Coinbase is the pick and shovel model where they're facilitating the trades, perhaps I should have taken that same amount of money I invested in the Coinbase IPO and put it into Bitcoin. Now, I already own Bitcoin and I've made a really amazing return on Bitcoin. I've owned it since uh, a long time, let's just say. I've owned it when it was about a tenth of what it is now. Uh, and even before then, I bought some. Uh, but if Coinbase is the pick and shovel model and Bitcoin is the gold in this, in this analogy, Maybe I should have taken the same amount I invested in Coinbase and just put it into Bitcoin. Because if you look at Bitcoin, it's, I think, uh, 
it's nine o'clock here, it might be down a little bit, but it's at near an all time high and there's no stopping it in my opinion. My, my, my opinion here on Bitcoin is it's gonna keep going as more and more people buy into this idea. Matter of fact, Coinbase's IPO makes me believe in Bitcoin even more, right? Because it's sort of more validation that cryptocurrencies are here to stay. So one of the things I'm doubting is whether I should have taken that Coinbase money and invested it into cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin itself, the underlying asset, not the picks and the shovels. So my plan is to go ahead and hold the Coinbase um, stock that I bought, unless it probably doubles, then I probably will go ahead and sell it off. But uh, my plan is to hold it for now. I do believe in it as a business model. I do believe in the cryptocurrency market. I'm a big fan of Coinbase. I think they do great work. But these are the types of decisions you have to make. You've got this sort of uh, uh, opportunity cost in buying Coinbase versus just buying the underlying asset. So imagine if Bitcoin does keep racing off and what if Bitcoin's underlying price outpaces the growth that I could be getting in Coinbase itself as a stock. So these are all the things you have to think through as an investor. Obviously, I need to give you my legal statement. As always, uh, I'm sharing with you what I've done as an investor. Doesn't mean it's something you should do. You should always talk to a qualified professional to make these decisions. But what I'm trying to impart to you here is not necessarily that I may have made a mistake. Part of investing is making mistakes. I have a really good track record, though. Uh, what I'm trying to impart to you here is the idea that uh, this whole pick and shovel versus gold model, when you're making investment decisions, sometimes think about, is there an underlying asset that this stock actually facilitates me being part of? And should I just buy the underlying asset? Okay, so I hope that information helps. Until next time, I hope you find your voice. Have a good day.